Thunder, Thunder, Thundercats, ho! This is Scorp1701, and tonight we are going to be taking a look at another Super 7 Thundercats Ultimates, the Evil Vulture Man. Yes, and I love these Super 7 Thundercats. They are so great. These are the toys I wish I had when I was a kid, but I could in no way afford a $55 Thundercat toy when I was eight. <laughs> Or seven or six. I don't know. However old I was when they came out. But anyway, let's uh, jump right into this review. Take a look. It does come in the brown uh, mailer box. You do have Thundercats, Vulture Man, ages 14 plus, Super 7. On the back of the box, you have some credits for the box. And it's from Warner Brothers and Super 7 and a barcode. But that is no fun. And we all know that this is just a appetizer until we get to the main attraction which is this awesome presentation of a box and you can see it has the awesome double snakes of evil denoting that this is a villain and you have thundercats here you have ages 14 again super 7 vulture man so you'll know who's in the box on the top of the box you do have ultimates Side of the box, nothing. This side of the box, nothing. On the bottom of the box, more credits for the box and a barcode. And finally, coming around to the back of the box, the huge Thundercats logo. That is so beautiful. Love it. And contents, one figure with accessories and Super 7. But again, this is just the appetizer. This is just the tease till we get to the main course. And to do that, we must remove the slip cover and we will bring it up ever so slowly and fastly to reveal such a great figure. Boom! There is Vulture Man in the packaging. And he looks uh, very uncomfortable. <laughs> it looks like his head is uh, being turned a different way there. I think that's how he's supposed to be because there does appear to be some molded uh, indentions in the package. Has some accessories here to the side, alternate heads, some guns, and some cool stuff that we'll take a look at later. Thundercats, Vulture Man again, the same. On the top, you do get the same ultimates there. Still nothing on this side, still nothing on this side. The bottom is obviously the same, but when we come around to the back, we get an awesome, awesome picture of Vulture Man, and he is looking all creepy and maniacal. You have Super 7 here, and you have a brief read-up, and we will zoom in so we can take a look at that. All right, and you can pause the video here, read that to your heart's content, but we must be moving on. Coming back out, still an awesome picture of Vultureman. I love that. So this is what Vultureman looks like in the box, but no one wants to see this conniving bird in the box, so let's get him out and see what he can do. And here we have Vulture Man out of the box. And out of the box, he stands at approximately seven and a quarter inches tall. And that's a big bird. No, not that big bird. The one that lives on Sesame Street. This is a completely different big bird. This one's evil. <laughs> And as you can see, he comes with a slew of accessories, and we will get into those a little later. But first off, I want to take a look at this maniacal bird man himself. So zooming real close in on the head sculpt, it is very, very detailed and scary looking. I love the way that this came out. Super 7 really nailed it. That beak is just huge. It comes out and it is all jaded and it has some nice points coming down to the end here very nicely done coming up to his head which is kind of bald so he can kind of like a bald vulture which is you know kind of what they look like and you do have a 
kind of a different color tint. You have a lighter color right here, and then it comes down back to a darker color with a little bit of brown wash. The eyes are just basically yellow orbs, but you do get one little red dot there for pupils, and that just makes him look insane and crazy. I love that. Side of the head has a little bit of dark brown coming around to the back, and I can imagine like this is, is this is a bald guy, and this is if he was human, this would be the back of his hairline. So that is really neat. Got a really large neck, and you can see some muscles in there. Let's zoom out just a little bit because he is getting fairly large. You can see the top of his shoulders are brown feather type section. Now this is a single piece. It is glued on there and it, as you can see it comes all the way down to the ba back. It is very nicely done. Got a lot of detail in there and a darker wash. I like that. It is cut at the shoulder here so that will hopefully uh, help articulation but it feels very thick so i don't know if uh, that's going to help or hinder us but we'll find out when we get to articulation coming down to his abs he is shirtless and you can see the molds and the pecs and the, all the muscles in there that is really cool it's all the same tan color even coming down to his arms and forearms and hands so this is really nice there is some muscular detail in the arms. I like that coming down to the hands. And he has some very sharp pointed fingernails. That is cool. And they're done in a lighter white. And coming to his midsection, he has a belt. Brown with a little blue buckle. And that is basically connected at the bottom of his abs and that will bring you down to this skirt it's purple and it has got some nice molded detail in there it is cut on the side so the legs could probably move out get into that in articulation and it goes all the way around and you can lift it up and you can see he's got some purple underwear on so yeah that's not too bad and the back is again the same purple underwear and that will bring us to his legs legs same color he's basically uh naked except for this little skirt and then he has some nice toes very sharp toes be careful of that but what's worse is if you go around on the back he has these little talons sticking out of the back of his calf and these suckers are sharp too so i've kind of already poked myself with them trying to just move them around a bit so that is really cool all right so putting him down wow this guy is huge and he is very very detailed again i love that head all right moving on and when it comes to our articulation, starting at the head, the head can go around 360 degrees. It can look up a little bit of ways, which you know, is good because he's a bird and he needs to be able to look up. It can look down a little bit of ways. It can wiggle and waggle to the side, so that is really neat. Got a lot of good motion in that head. Love it. All right, coming down to the shoulders. If you lift up this part of the feathered back, I guess, they, the shoulders are on a hinge and they can go around 360 degrees, but I don't think it's worth it because it's going to take a lot of effort to hold this up and then try to get the shoulder move up. But they can come up from the body and they can hinge back down. You do have bicep rotation 360 degrees here and that will bring you down to his elbow bend and he's got an okay elbow bend it's not exactly 90 degrees i don't think because the arm is just molded and it's so uh muscly and stuff so eh, it's all right coming down the forearm does rotate it is built into the elbow which is really nice i like that a lot and then you come down to the hand and the hand can rotate 360 degrees and hinge in and out so that is cool when it comes to the hands coming to the midsection here the midsection does have the uh, ab crunch and it can kind of go up and down and wiggle left and right i like that i don't think it can go 360 degrees from right here but normally they do and i don't want to mess with it because i don't want to try to break it 
but you do get 360 degrees waist articulation right here at the belt. That will take you around like such, and that will bring you down to the legs. The legs, again, have this cut in the hip skirt, so the leg can kind of go out to the side. It can go up a little ways and kind of back not so much because it can't really get past the hip skirt here. So as far as thigh rotation, you do get a good thigh rotation, 360 degrees. And then you come down to the knee bend, which is nicely done. You can't really see it. And you can move it back again, like the elbow. You don't get a lot of movement with that knee, but eh, it's okay. It does come into a boot cut as sorts, and it can go around 360 degrees, bringing you down to his foot. And the foot is hinged, so it can go down, it can go up, and it can rock all the way around the world. Okay, there you go with that. And that is going to be Vulture Man's articulation. Very articulated, except where you're going to have the hindrance of the feathered shoulders and some of the skirt. All right, moving on. And Vulture Man comes with three sets of hands, ranging from slightly open to open a bit. And then open really wide where the fingers are uh, protruding out so he can get a finger hold onto whatever it is he's having. And each set of hands is painted well and they all have a good mold to them. And they have those sharp fingernails picked out in the creamy white paint. So that is really cool. Alright, moving on. And for Vulture Man's next accessory, he has an awesome angry alternate head. And this is really cool. You can see his mouth wide open and he is, Ah, no! Horrible Thundercats! Oh, oh ah! <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> Alright, so it's basically got the same design and exactly like the other one, except the mouth is now molded open. And you can see his ghastly tongue just sitting there and hanging out. And you can see a lot of nice detail up there in the roof of his mouth. You can actually see cavities in the... Uh, bone structure so that is really neat and he still has that one little pupil for the eye <laughs> thundercats i'll get you <laughs> so yeah, very maniacal if you like this awesome uh different head sculpt so yeah i, I don't know which one i'm going to use i like this one because it's got more character the beak being open really really shows off this guy's uh evilness <laughs> all right moving on and for the first character accessories, he has these nice tools. And you got a wrench here. It's really nicely done. Got some molded detail in there. And it's done in silver. Very, very nice. He has a pair of needle nose pliers or vulture nose pliers, however you want to uh, describe them. They are nice and silver. Got a nice red handle. Got a little bit of molded detail into the handle. I like that. And you can see the little separation parts right here in the surface. I like the detail on that and then you have a little yellow screwdriver and that is cool and of course Vulture Man was the mechanic of the group kind of to rival Panthro in making machines and inventions and such so yeah he has to have these little tools all right moving on and Vulture Man also comes with a bottle of his Super Power Potion. And it basically is what it sounds. Uh, Vulture Man created this potion and he drank it. And he got really big and strong. And he kind of, you know, had to be stopped. But he got a little too big for his feathers. And he tried to attack Mumra. And Mumra just, you know, slapped him down like the birdie man that he is. So I think this is a cool thing to throw in there in case you wanted to have a super powered vulture man that's all a good idea to make a second vulture man figure who's all buffed and huge so yeah that might be something super seven thinks of down the road all right moving on and the next accessory for vulture man is these little goggles now this is the set of goggles he wore 
why he piloted his flying machine. It was basically just a airplane that looked like a vulture, and he invented it, and he was all happy about it, and he'd wear these, and it was really neat, and they're nicely done. You have some nice black paint for the lenses. They're sculpted really well. You got a little antenna looking here thing at the front, a little bit of color differential, and you got some nice brown for the strap, and you got some buckles molded in there at the back so that is really neat and he could wear this on either head and it just kind of looks very silly but very vulture manny and those are gonna be his flight goggles moving on and coming to vulture man's weapons first off he has this standard laser gun i believe it's just nothing really special i think this is just your standard gun that you would zap Thundercats with kind of a variation of the original guns that we got early on with Jackalman, I believe. And he holds this really nicely. I like the way it looks in his hand. It's got a good color and good paint on it, so pretty cool for what it is. The next weapon he has is going to be this three hooked, like poker or spear or thing. I don't actually think he had this in the cartoon, but he did have it in the LJN original figure kind of something that's similar to it and I think that's where this actually comes from and it's redone in a more modern take and it's very nicely painted in silver nice and sharp here at the ends so that is a cool little accessory that he can hold and be very menacing with and the next weapon he has is his shifter gun. And this is an interesting weapon he made. It made a debut in the same name episode, the shifter. And basically what this is, is he would use this on a Thundercat and he could shift the bodies with one Thundercat to another or one mutant to another. So he uh, initially changed Snarf into Panthro and Panthro into Snarf and then I think he got uh, Slythe and Jackalman. So this was a pretty neat weapon. I like the color on it. It's got your standard uh, purples and blues. Same motif and I think the mold is really nicely done. A lot of good detail in there and he can obviously hold it with his bigger hands. All right and his last gadget this is the voice imitator and this is where he could talk into it and he can make his voice sound like any other thundercats or persons that he wants to and that can lead the thundercats into some troublesome situations and this was from the episode divide and conquer so yeah it is a pretty neat little gadget of vulture Man's. and those are going to be his weapons and gadgets moving on and full comparison, here you have Vulture Man and the way he would look <laughs> confronting the mutants for screwing up one of his plans or breaking one of his <laughs> inventions. He didn't really get along with them too well, but uh, it was still funny watching them interact with each other. So that is a cool comparison. All right, moving on. And for another comparison, here Vulture Man is with Mumra, the decayed form. Vulture Man did break off from the main group of mutants, and he did try to do some other dealings with Mumra and the Lunatics. And he was kind of an interesting character and kind of rounded off. So you could actually never know whose side he was going to be on. Well, you could because he was going to be on his own side. But uh, anyway, that's kind of cliche. But I thought these two looked really nice together. All right. Moving on. And for our final comparison here, Vulture Man is attacking the Thundercats. And again, I don't think this is going to end too well for him. You got Tigra, lion -O, Panther, and sneaking up behind the Vulture Man is Shatara. And I think this is a beautiful set of action figures. And I'm very happy to add another one to my collection. All right, moving on. And this has been the Super 7 Ultimates Thundercats Vulture Man. And this figure is just so cool. I think I love everything about this figure, which is pretty consistent of how I feel with all of the Super 7 Thundercats. They are just very cool figures. I had a really good experience with this Vulture Man. The mold is great. The sculpt is great. There was not a lot of paint blemishes on here. In fact, there's nothing really that I wanted to point out as really bad. This figure had a lot of great detail in it. The accessories were just 
great. I loved every single one of them. You had very specifically Vulture Man and all of his gear and guns and weapons that he's created. So I really love how Super 7 takes the time to investigate and research these characters before they just give them to you. Because, you know, they could have just put out some generic club or a gun in there, but they didn't. They actually put in accessories that are specific to the character and I love that Super 7 always does that. So yes, this is definitely a pickup if you like the evil mutants from the Thundercats. It's hard to believe that Vulture Man wasn't there from the beginning, but if you go back and watch, he really wasn't. He came in a little later in the series, but uh, when you watch it today or you remember it, it's kind of hard to imagine that he wasn't there from the beginning. So if you're looking for this awesome figure, you can find him at online retailers such as Big Bad Toy Store, The Chosen Prime. And he's going to run anywhere between $50 to $60 depending on where you pick him up. But again, I think he's definitely worth it if you're trying to complete your Super 7 Thundercat collection. So happy hunting. And if you do find him, make sure you watch out for the spikes on the back of those legs they are really painful all right guys that is the video i hope you enjoyed it and until next time keep playing